Josh was our uncle. We're just gonna sing a couple songs here.
Like I just said, my name is Matthew, uh, Joshua's my uncle, and uh, I just wrote a few words that I wanted to say. Um, so words cannot even describe how heartbroken I am right now. Josh, you were like a best friend to me throughout my whole life. I'm so thankful for all the memories I have with you, especially the little ones that we take for granted of. It's so crazy to me how quickly life can be taken from our hands. I know you're in a much better place than all of us now, and you'll be watching over our family from here on out just like you always did on earth. God's plan is bigger than any of ours, and I just pray that he uses you through your passing to teach me and others around you. You are light, the life of the party. I'll never forget that about you. Thank you. As you come to the uh, come to the end of a life, it's always interesting to me as a as a pastor that I think I've discovered over years that most everybody just goes right on ahead through their life and they go ahead and preach their own funeral in the way that they lived, in the way that they chose to love others, the way they chose to care, the way they chose to show love to the ones closest to them. And I think it's very evident this afternoon that. Uh, Joshua never missed a chance to tell someone that he loved him. Never missed a chance to be able to point people to Jesus. And it's because of that, um, it's easy to open scripture today. It's easy to look at a verse that um, his family said was one of his favorite. The other day when I went up to the house to see him, and uh, because it's not a short drive to Lake Lord, I had to do what you usually do after a long drive. I had to visit the powder room. <laughs> and as I went in, I noticed on the mirror, there were Bible verses all over the mirror. And Chandra shared with me that was stuff that reminded her and Josh of exactly what they should be praying, where they should be in their walk with God, and things to be pointed out. One of the things that was on the mirror, one of the verses, and it's there in the paper that you were given when you came in today, is a verse, if you're a church person, and I'm not taking for granted, some of us here today may not be church people, and that's okay. I can tell you this, Josh would want you to know his Jesus above anything else. But if you've been in church or you've been around it or maybe even played ball when you were in school at some point, someone probably gave a devotion, somebody probably came, gave a challenge before a, a, a sports event or at some point, and they used the verse that Josh claimed as one of his favorite verses. You may be familiar with it. It says this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I would say this. How many of you have heard that verse before? Just nod your head this way so we can see. All right, there you go. Most everybody has. 
But here's what's interesting about taking one particular verse out of a letter that was written by a guy who, if you know your Bible, a guy who didn't like Jesus, a guy who didn't like Christians. His name was Saul. Saul was a guy who spent part of his life absolutely against this movement of the church, this movement known as the way. Until one day, much like Josh, God shined a light and said, you're my kid. I need you. I need you in my army. And Saul's name was changed to Paul. Through that, he began to plant churches and begin to tell people about this Jesus that he at one time was persecuting. And as he stepped out, he wrote most of the New Testament that we find in our Bibles. One of these particular letters was to a church in Philippi. And it's where we find those words that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Here's the thing. We can't just take that verse by itself. What is it about that verse that allowed the Apostle Paul and allowed a guy like Josh to say, this is a verse that I want to use to keep my life where it needs to be? Well, let me back up a little bit if I can. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I do want to share a few things with you. You see, the previous verses to that one that we read and we're so familiar with are words like these that the Apostle Paul penned to the church. He said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I kind of feel like Josh did a lot of rejoicing every time I saw him. Sabrina and I were laughing a few minutes ago about the fact that when Josh and Chandra would get out of their car and they'd come through the parking lot, they'd get to the front door and he'd have a hello for anybody. But by the time he got through the front doors, his big old hands were up in the air and he was waving at everybody and saying hello and usually had six or eight in tow back behind him, bringing them in with him. I think the man knew how to rejoice. And Paul says, the reason I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me is because I know how to rejoice in the Lord always. He says in verse 5, let your reasonableness be known to everyone because the Lord is at hand. And here's the thing. We don't know when the Lord is coming back. But I can tell you this. He's closer now than he was a minute ago. Now you want to see something crazy? He's even closer now. And he's even closer now. Well, hang on one second. Yeah, he's even closer now. And, and we see this played out in front of us. But here's the thing. We are promised that there is going to come a day that God is going to send his son Jesus back to this earth and rescue us. And I'm hoping it's in the middle of a quarantine pandemic, just in case you're wondering where my vote is. But Josh, he beat us all. He said, I'm not waiting for Jesus to come back. I think I'll just go hang out with him. And he knew Jesus was at hand. Then as we continue to read through this passage, this passage of scripture, we recognize the reason that we can know, the reason that we can say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is because I can rejoice and because I know there's coming a day that Jesus is going to come back. And then in verse six, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Now, that one's hard to do when you miss your hubby, <laughs> when you miss your boy, when you miss your brother, when you miss your uncle, when you miss your family member, and when we miss our friend. But we have a promise here. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, asking God, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. And we can be thankful for a life well lived in Josh. That's why I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Verse 7 is one of my favorite verses that I actually prayed with the family the other day. It says this. It says, if I recognize that I can rejoice, if I know that the Lord is his hand, if I can recognize I don't have to be anxious, but instead I can pray, then verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I am thankful for a peace that I do not understand. I am thankful that in the middle of something that on this side of heaven feels like such a tragedy. It feels like such a time that was missed. It feels like, wow, I can't believe this happened. And as you all got the news this week, it, it just doesn't make sense. But I can tell you this. There is a God in heaven that says, if 
you'll hold on to me, I will give you a peace that you will never understand, but you can accept it. My prayer is that from you all. That's why I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As Paul continues in this letter, he says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, let's think about those things. Let's make sure that in the midst of our sadness, in the midst of our grief, let's never, ever, ever forget who Josh lived for and where he is today. Paul continues and he says, what you've learned to me received. Verse 10, he says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now I have been revived before you and your concern for me has been revived. Verse 11, he says this, and this is where he gets really to that point of I can do all things. In verse 11, he says, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned that in whatever situation I am, tell you this, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, you can be content in God. He's got you. He's, he's got you. We're reminded in the crazy days that we're living in, and I said this to our church here months ago when all of this started, my God did not wake up and go, oh my goodness, there's a pandemic on earth. I should probably do something. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but God doesn't have to wake up because he doesn't go to sleep watches all the time. Paul says in verse 12, I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret. There was a secret that Josh knew that I think if you'll look at his life, I think if you'll look at the Jesus that he loved, you'll recognize it. He says, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then Paul finishes with these words, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you don't know Jesus today, I feel as if I would do Josh a disservice if I didn't invite you this afternoon to give your life to Jesus. He's there. Josh is there. He's there. He's with Jesus right now. And he's probably, if, you know, I don't know how true this is because I haven't seen heaven. But I think if there's any glimpse into heaven, Josh is peeking over the side or he's fishing with a Miami Dolphins jersey on or something. I'm not sure. But he's peeking over the edge of heaven going, come on, pastor, bring it home. Come on, buddy. Well, here's the bring it home. I don't want you to miss the heaven that Josh is enjoying today. And if you don't know. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, your invitation is sitting in front of you right now. And it's saying, accept this Jesus that Josh loved and give your life to him. In knowing him, the, the truth of Philippians 4.13 can be lived out in front of you. I had a privilege of being a student pastor for years and years and years. And, and um, I know I don't look that old. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but I had a privilege of doing it. And in... And, and, um, Meeting with teenagers and getting my opportunities to speak with sports teams and different things over the years. Um, again, this is a verse that's very familiar, and it's something I learned a long time ago. And you guys are going to participate with me in this. Um, you remember what I said earlier when Josh would come into a building? The hands would go up. Hey, guys, how are you? It's good to see you. Good to have you here. Let me, let me introduce you to my friends that I brought to church with me. By the way, he brought you all to church today, just in case you're wondering. All right? <laughs> There's something about those ten fingers on each hand that I want you to remember today. So here's what we're going to do in honor of Josh today. Everybody put your hands up in the air. If everybody does it, nobody looks stupid. All right, here we go. You ready? You're going to go with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Every time both hands are in the air. I want you to praise Jesus, and I want you to remember Josh. Chandra, he loved you with every bit that was in him. I know you're sad. I know the days ahead are going to be tough. 
but I know and I can see the smile on your face and the smile in your heart that says you have a man that loves you dearly and I know that you can rest in that dad and mom good job good job good job the days ahead are going to be tough sister friends, family, everyone that's sitting here I, I know this is difficult but I know, I know that every time you think of that dude, it's going to be with love. It's going to be of a rejoicing that he's with Jesus. Our prayers are with you. We are here to stand with you. All of these people who showed up in the middle of a pandemic are standing here with you today, saying that they love you and they're here for you. So we are here. We're going to continue this afternoon. There's some more people that are going to share. There's some music we're going to continue to share. And then we'll close out here in just a few minutes. singing my first song I ever wrote at Josh's wedding. It was his absolute favorite, and whenever I was with him, he cheered for me to sing it. The song speaks about how time flies and to treasure every moment. I can't stress enough how much we need to be thankful for every single moment with our loved ones. Our hearts are heavy, but heaven gained an angel.
And thank you so much for coming. I'm Josh's mother. That was my two daughters. Uh, Nicole was 16 and uh, Josh was 12 when a surprise came along. We had Paige. <laughs> so the youngest one up here dancing, Paige, was their toy for many years. <laughs> Dressed her up and played with her. And, anyway. Um, I, my heart skipped a beat. I did not know my uh, daughter of three children was going to do an aerial, which is a no hands cartwheel up here on this stage. I probably would have, if I had known, I'd have said, uh, no, let's not do that. But anyway, praise God, she, uh, that was good. 
Thank you. Thank you. So everything is good. Josh would be so happy right now. Wow. This is a great party. And I just want, I, I can't miss an opportunity to say a few things about Josh. I'm just going to tell you some facts you might not know. As a baby, you had to have his food at his high chair. Before you put him in it, he was hangry if he was hungry. And do you know that that is still today? <laughs> uh, yeah, you, yeah, Chandra knows. Chandra knows if dinner wasn't ready when he was hungry, he, uh, it wasn't a good deal. And number two, his grandma took him fishing and taught him to whittle with a pocket knife at age three. I came in from a meeting or something and she had him out there with a pocket knife at age three, cutting a big long stick and not cutting himself. So. And at five, he took English horseback riding lessons because the doctor said he was a little hyperactive and we needed to keep him busy. Well, there's not a whole lot back then that a five-year-old, he might have been four, that we couldn't find much for him to do. There wasn't any soccer or anything back then, so uh, we found English riding lessons. It, it worked out real well. He could ride a horse real well. At six, he played YMCA basketball, baseball, soccer, swimming lessons, dance lessons, and he learned to snow ski in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And then, even at age six, he accepted Jesus. He asked me one day in the living room. I used to uh, teach first, second, and third grade back then. And sometimes he'd come in my classroom. And so one day he asked me, tell me about Jesus and how he can come in my heart. And I did. Um, as a teenager, we had to always tell him, turn your car stereo down or you're going to damage your ears, damage your hearing, and you'll be a loud talker. <laughs> Does anybody know, know, know how loud he talked? I think it was because he couldn't hear well. He couldn't hear himself talking. In high school, he was Bishop Rose, which was a Catholic high school. Isn't that funny? But it was a really good Catholic school. <laughs> He was their MVP in basketball and earned a college scholarship. Also, he was awarded by the nuns and the faculty at this school the most Christian character award. <laughs> that was funny if you knew him in high school. He, <laughs> he was a character. Well, when this happened, of course, you know, I was devastated. My yard right now in Lake Lord looks like a park. And Josh has done that in the last two, two years or so. He bought plants, he bought trees, and many of you here have helped him work in the yard. How many have helped him work in the yard? I mean, Mikey's sitting back there. Mikey and Josh built me a great big flower planter and a walkway, and Josh found a, made we a had friend. Paul do it. Huh? We had a fall do it. Yes, okay, so many people have come and helped Josh work in my yard. He met a worker over at the hotel near our house and, and uh, found out that this guy would come over and help him do some things, and oh, it's amazing what's in my yard. Plants, trees, uh, walkways, solar lights. At night, it's like a, it's, at night it looks like Disney World. It's, <laughs> it's all lit up with lights. Josh like anything that twinkled, lit. Bling. <laughs> he really appreciated it. But yeah, I was out in my garden, in my park, that Josh made me. And he'd always say, Mom, I did this for you. Do you like it? And I was walking out there and I said, Lord, why? Why now? Why wasn't I here? Why couldn't I hug him? And the Lord said, two days later, not right then when I was walking through my park. But two days later, I got my answer. And I want to share this with you. It's from Josh. It was sent to me on January 20th, 2020, this year. And I never heard it because I'm not very good with 
anything computer or even this phone. And I just happened to find it because somebody told me, I can't leave you a message, your messages are full. And I went to my husband, I said, I don't know how to delete messages. How do you delete, clean your phone out so you can get messages? So he was showing me and um, I saw Josh's name on here. So I, oh, it better play. <laughs> I uh, listened to this message because Josh didn't leave messages. He would just call back. But he left me a message, and hopefully I can play it and share it with you. Th this is God's answer. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, to break every chain. That's it. No words. God had him make that mess. God had him make that message for me because he God knew that I needed it. I would need it. So I'm so thankful that the Lord said, it's okay. He's okay. I want to say to you, be ready. Jesus is real. Heaven is real. But so is hell. If you miss the opportunity to invite Jesus into your life, and if you're afraid about it, if you don't understand it, just say to Jesus, if you're real, if you're really real, like they say, prove it to me. Show, show me. Because that's what I did. I said, Lord, show me why you do, why Josh is God. And he did. And he will for you too. Don't miss it. I want to see all of you in heaven and Josh does too. Please don't miss seeing him. I love you and thank you for coming. And hold us up in, our, in your prayers if you will. But we're going to be alright. Thank you. miss him forever. Like mama said, because <laughs> mama always right. But like mama said, if you don't know Jesus, today's the day to meet him. So that one day you'll get to see Josh again, but more important than that, you'll get to see Jesus. Family, I have uh, just been honored to get to know each one of you through this. To see the courage, to see the gifts, I don't know that I've ever been a part of a funeral where so many family members took a part in honoring an individual. And with grace and courage, you did it all. Um, I know he's proud of you. I know he loves you. And I know you're going to miss him. And we're here for you. To all of you that are here this morning, this afternoon, I keep saying that I'm sorry, that are here this afternoon, hey, will you do me a favor? This always happens. Celebrations of life. They pass. We grieve. Days will turn into weeks and weeks will turn into months. And there will still be an empty spot in this family's life. Will you do me a favor? Will you honor them by not giving up? By making sure, even if it is a telephone that you don't know how to work, <laughs> put it on a calendar, write it down somewhere, check on this sweet family and check on them. Because they're going to hurt and they're going to grieve because they loved him. And I know we're going to miss him as well, but we know he's with Jesus, and that's the most important thing. I'm going to close this out in prayer and just thank God for a wonderful man, one of his children that is with him now. And after I pray, I want to encourage you that if you'd like to speak to the family, uh, they're okay with that if you want to speak to them. Um, I would say this as a pastor and as a family that I know is exhausted. Um, honor them and be kind of quick and give them an opportunity to settle and get back together and just hug and love on each other. But if you want to speak to them when we end, please do that. They're going to hang out right down front. 
and you're welcome to do that. But just honor them and uh, share a hug. I can tell you this, it'll mean a whole lot more a month from now. So don't forget as the days go forward. Let me pray. And uh, after I do, you'll be dismissed. Father, we love you. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for a privilege of getting to know a guy named Josh. A guy who really wasn't good at shaking my hand. He would go right through my hand and hug me. A guy who I'm pretty confident has never met a stranger in his entire life. And God, I'm pretty sure he's the head of the greeting team in heaven today. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of knowing him. I know that there is a family and there are friends that are sitting here today that are going to grieve in the days to come and are grieving now. God, we are sure to run across questions like why and why now. But Lord, you have answers and you only want us to come to you so that you can provide that peace that passes all understanding. God, help us to remember that in the hours and the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come that we can claim the same promise that Josh lived by, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. God, if there's someone here today that needs to commit their life to you, let them recognize that it is as simple as admitting their sin, believing in you, and giving their life to you. God, nothing could be better than someone coming to you through this. We trust you. Even when we don't see your hand, we can trust your heart. And that's where we find ourselves today. God, I pray for Chandra. I pray for the family. I pray for mom and dad and sisters and brothers-in-law and nieces and nephews. And God, I just pray that you comfort their hearts and give them that peace. Help them in the days to come to share the memories, to share the smiles and rejoice that they got to be a part of Josh's life for a short time. God, we will honor you and we will love you in our days to come. And may we do that in every memory we have of Josh. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.